this issue of the Northern Front. I think it's quite clear now that we are not in a position uh, right now or for the foreseeable future to initiate a decisive land campaign or aerial campaign for that matter, a comprehensive land campaign against Hezbollah. And when I've talked to people about this and they say we have no solution because if we go to war, it will be a bloodbath, um, a trail of bodies, as as it's been described to me, up to the Latani, which is where everybody more or less is described our, our, our finish line. And when I say to people, look, the real threat to Israel comes from the ballistic missiles, the precision guided medium to intermediate, medium range ballistic missiles that are stationed north of the Latani. What are we supposed to do about that? And then suddenly the Americans come and say, we have a, we will, we want a diplomatic process. Leaving that insanity aside, is, is there an alternative? And I, I'm talking to you exactly as I talk to the, the other people. <laughs> is there an alternative to this that will still yield victory with a minimum amount of casualties? And by victory, I mean total victory, not just a cleansing of the uh, area in southern Lebanon where the Radwan uh, Hezbollah strike forces are located, but to the north of the Latani where their headquarters are located in Beirut and in the Becca and where their ballistic mis- precision guided ballistic missiles or are, are heavyweights are located. And I presented an alternative approach to this problem that did not use, and I'll be uh, somewhat careful in this conventional weaponry. And people have been horrified at my suggestion. Why? Because the world wouldn't approve of it. Because the Americans in particular would come down on us with hobnail boots. So my, my answer is, if we're not going to do something logical up north, we can't return our people to the frontier. Which means when this is all over, Hezbollah wins without really expending any amount of material or manpower. We can't without, return without crossing the border. Without crossing the border. When they ask when for people here in, in hotels in Rushalai and back you east from the north, ask when can we go back? Their answer is quit complaining. And when they say, well, when will the will the money last? They're told maybe end of January, February. Then what? Well you're on your own at that point. They're out of jobs. They ha- they can't go back to their their houses. Their fruit crops are basically dead right now because they haven't been able to harvest them. That's about 70, 75 percent of our orchard crop each year dead. So who exactly is winning up north? You know, you know I saw a picture yesterday, a video that was emblematic of everything that's wrong with our military right now. It showed a bunch of cameras, Israeli cameras, very expensive high-tech cameras that are high above the border, surveilling the frontier. And Hezbollah was just picking them off with uh, wire-guided and laser-guided anti-tank rockets, cornets, one right after the other. And I called a friend of mine in the military and, and I said, we have equipment that could protect these systems. Why don't we we use them? And his answer was, I don't know. That was the answer. I don't know. So they're blinding us. It's quite clear when you look at the videos, they're blinding us. We're, and we're not even defending the cameras that are really our kind of first line of defense. So the issue up north is if we are unwilling to pay a butcher's bill by invading Lebanon and fighting a war 
without adequate supplies. And we are not willing to do what is necessary to allow our people to come back to their homes and their businesses and their farms on the northern frontier, then we're facing strategic defeat up north of the worst sort. So the question everybody has to ask is, is that what you want? And if the answer to that is no, then that leads to the next question. You have to get rid of somebody or a group of people who are ostensibly running the show right now. Now, I noticed that the Kaplan force just came out again. They came up out of their uh, their dung heaps and they were there protesting because they want a new government. They, they, they want a new election. The point is, do we need a new election? Yeah, but not because they're asking for it. We can actually get the same effect if we get rid of the man at the top, he's passed his stale date. And that's up to the Likud. They know very well that everybody passed maybe 12, 13, maybe 14 on their, their list is going to have to find another job come the next election. So if they're smart, They'll put somebody else in as prime minister from the party who will tell Gantz and Eisenkot goodbye. And they will ask for whatever it's worth, and it'll be worth a lot, to bring Lieberman in. I would even make him minister of defense to bring him in and prosecute this war the way it should be prosecuted. It isn't going to happen. I know this isn't going to happen because the Likud is so weak and devoid of real patriots who can think that they're just willing to go along with the mad emperor right now, right over the cliff. I know why, and you know why very well, Bibi decided to bring Gantz and Eisenkot in. That was to spread the guilt. Spread the guilt. And that's no reason to bring people in. He would have been better off, I would have thought better of him, if he'd brought Lieberman in. Lieberman has articulated a six-point uh, military reform package, which on the surface of things looks very good. I, I have a problem trusting Lieberman for obvious reasons. That, that but, I think is the, the, the major problem that man has. Yeah, that it's, that it's, he, he may be right on, 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 on several fronts and, and in, with regards to many issues, but very few people can actually bring themselves to trust him. This is why I think right, right now we need a, a caretaker government, a replacement with Bibi. You can bring Lieberman in as part of the war cabinet, but we need... And again, I'm going to get hammered for this statement, but we need a generalissimo to lead us to victory. A general who is a warrior. And we have them, but they have to break what I call the khaki ceiling or the olive green ceiling. We have many great generals that have been not denied promotion because, well, the very best, I think, as far as I understand, is the very best Colonel because of this. Offer Winter. Yes, Offer Winter. Perfect. Yes. He's a perfect example. Or um, General Kahane. Any one of these generals, wonderful people, good Jewish warriors. Effie Eitan, wonderful blood and guts generals. This is who we need right now. Whether it's one, two, or three, I don't care. But we need generals that will fight uh, to win while protecting the lives of our soldiers and our home front. Right now, we don't have that. And that really casts a uh, pall over our prospects for victory I think, uh, at the end I think, of this uh, conflict. I think it is becoming increasingly clear to an increasing number of people that... Netanyahu always was a disaster, but this was not generally recognized by by all. But I think today 
it is increasingly being recognized. The man is completely un, is not fit for purpose. And he's, he's cannot, he, he's, can, he, he cannot possibly uh, lead the Jewish people forward. No, Simp simply quite the opposite. The man, the man must be removed from office. Not because we agree with the Kaplan force, no. George Soros funded, uh, New Israel <laughs> fund, and all the rest of them. No, but because uh, Netanyahu is, is part of the problem, a major part of the problem, and certainly not part of the solution. At all. Quite the opposite. 